Shalom Akiam. This is Brother Quan coming through once again. Just want to cover um, more of the scriptures. And I just wanted to establish, further establish the fact that the Most High has always only been dealing with Israel. The scriptures is a book that's predicated towards only the Israelites. And this misconception that the book is for everybody has to be tarnished because at the end of the day, Truth is coming to the forefront. So the more of us are starting to be aware of most of the things of this world that's based in the truth and that's based in lies. And the Bible is the biggest form of misconception that there is. We have to understand that the book is written for only a certain group of people. And it was only meant for us to understand it based off of what took place in the ancient times from the beginning. So we have to understand that. The Bible was only written for the Israelites. The Bible was only written by the Israelites in regards to the authors, you know, in regards to the prophets who were given certain ordinances at the behest of the Heavenly Father. So let's just start with Ezekiel chapter three, where it says here in verse one, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel, the house of Yasha Allah. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Yasha Allah. Who the son of man? Obviously, the son of man is Yahweh and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Once again, Christ only came for Israel. Christ only came to save Israel, to give repentance unto the Israelites. Christ is an Israelite. Christ came from the tribe of Judah. Judah is the son of Israel. Israel, a.k.a. Jacob. Israel means Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah means he is the prince of the power. He is the prince of God. We are the true people of the book, so-called black people. We must understand that. Let's continue on, though. So it says here, for thou art not sent, verse five, for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to those, but to the house of Israel, meaning the people you're familiar with, not a strange speech, not a foreign language, the people that you're familiar with, which is your people, Israel, the Israelites, Yasha Allah. Not these fake ass white people who claim that to be Jews, the true Jews, the true Judites, the true Israelites who make up the 12 tribes of Yashar Allah. OK, let's continue on. Not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard. OK, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. Right. So this is going into what? The understanding that our people are hard headed. The majority of our people are hard headed. You know what I mean? They're thankless. You know, they're ungrateful. The majority of our people, they don't understand their gifts and their value. The most high blessed you with the good looks that we have as, as black people, with the with the um the abilities that we have, the, the abilities that we possess, the difference in our our um spirit, our genome, our phenotype, you know, our makeup, genetics, so on and so forth is just stronger than everybody else. And you could just break all that stuff down to the average black person. Some, you know, more nine times out of 10, they're still not going to get it because our people are destroyed. Our people are destroyed. They think that they're black. Black is a color. Black is not a culture. Black is not a race. Black is not a language. We have to understand the truth. Let's continue on. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. And thy forehead strong against their foreheads as an adamant harder than flint. Have I made thy forehead fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Right. That's talking about the rebellious nation, our people. You know, what I mean, in regards to the majority of our people who won't come back to him in humility. You know, what I mean, so it says as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead, meaning I made you hard headed. You know what I mean? I made I made you hard headed because of your incompetence, because of our ancient forefathers and their ability 
in regards to their ability to disobey the Heavenly Father, not their ability to follow the Heavenly Father, their ability or inability to disobey, their inability to follow the Lord's statutes and commandments. Therefore, we suffer, but being that we have that understanding, it's up to us, it should behoove us to change and come back to the Heavenly Father in truth and sincerity and faith and strengthen that. So let's continue on. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears, receive in thine heart, meaning receive in your mind, receive it, take it all in. You know what I mean? Let it be instilled in you so you can understand where to walk, how to walk, what to walk, what to stand on, so on and so forth. So let me get another scripture real quick. Um, Let me just put this on uh, airplane mode real quick, though. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's get uh, Amos. We're going to go in Amos. And we're going to start with uh, verse. We're going to start with chapter. Chapter two. Yeah, we're going to start with um, Amos chapter two. Right. No, you know what? I'm sorry. We're going to start in Amos chapter three. And we're going to start at verse two. Right. Well, we might as well start at verse one. Excuse me. Hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Yasharala, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, from the land of Mizraim, from the land of Kemet, saying, you only have I known. You only. You only. Not. Not. um Ye nations. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't say ye nations. It say you only, 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 only. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. This is coming from the word of God. They do not teach this in the church system. They do not read this verse in the church system. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. It does not say ye nations have I known. It say you only. So who is the you only? Obviously, when you read up in verse one, it tells you who that you only is. The most high is only dealing with us. Straight up, man. Straight up. You only have I. You only. Have I known of all the families of the earth? Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together lest they be in any agreement? Meaning walk in, walk in the way of someone that's doing righteousness. If you walk in the way of somebody that's doing wickedness, you just as liable to go down with them. Just like, you know, you're guilty by association kind of thing. Do right. Do righteousness according to the will of the Heavenly Father, in which it was given unto you from the ancient times. Heavenly, I mean, excuse me, Yasha Allah, Israel, wake up, man. Wake up. So-called black man and woman, you are God's chosen. Wake the fuck up. You need to understand that so you can understand that this world is not for us. Black Lives Matter is not for us. LGBTQP. A, C, D, E, whatever is not for us. Be not of this world. The Most High separated us. He separated us. He did not say join unto these people. He said be not like these people. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, y'all. Wake up. Let's do better, man. Israel, black man, black woman. Know who you are. Know why these things happen to you, especially the black man, because you're God's chosen. You're God's chosen. You're God's chosen. Let's continue on, man. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter three, right? Real quick. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man. Eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel, as I was reading. As I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll, and he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat, 
and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Yahshua Allah will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Yahshua Allah are impudent and hard-headed, impudent, thankless. You know what I mean? Hard-headed, hard-headed. Where you think we get that 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 expression from? Oh, you hard headed, cause we Israel, man. You know, and, and who say that most? Black people. Stop being so goddamn hard headed, right? Cause the Most High said it. The Most High told us we are hard headed. We are stiff necked people. Let's continue on though, right? Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and their forehead strong against their foreheads. What does that mean? I have made thy face strong against their faces. I have made you more stronger than them. You know what I mean? Foreheads. That's a twofold scripture. Not only is it talking about you being hard headed, but it's also talking about foreheads, mentally strong. You know what I mean? Like as far as our genetic makeup, you know, by nature, the, like as far as the cerebral, cort the cerebral um, cortex of the so-called black man is stronger than any other nation. You know what I mean? As far as the cerebrum, the gray matter, is stronger than any other nation, whether people want to believe that shit or not. We have dominant traits over every other nation on the planet Earth. White people, no disrespect, it's just the truth. They have recessive traits. The people that come from Esau, the white man, Caucasian, they have recessive traits. Why is the Most High distinguishing that? To let you know that the Most High is not Babylonian. The Most High separated the motherfucking nations. No, didn't, and I'm not, I'm, I'm cussing for effect. The most high is, it doesn't say you can't cuss. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we have to understand listen, man. Listen, come back to him. This Bible is not no bullshit, man. This Bible is a word that will save your life. This book will save your life. Because this book is the only book that's, 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 that stands alone. The, the, the most dangerous book on the planet Earth. Because this book is powerful. This book has power in it. Straight up, man. Right? As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord power, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great Russian saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Based off of your understanding of what the truth is, what the most high comes with. What this Bible is all about, the truth, the truth, the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set us free. The truth shall set us free. Right, man? Come on. Come on, man. The Pharisees, this is John 7 and 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Yehoshai unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. This is giving you the understanding that what? I just wanted to bring out this scripture because we have to understand the power of Christ, the power of Yehoshai. What is the power of Yehoshai? Is that Yehoshai is the only man to be you know, brought from a celestial form to a physical form. And people, you know, people scoff at that. People want to laugh at that. Or, or, and they try to defame Christ and, and illegitimize Christ. Christ was a, a, a real figure, a real person who walked the earth. You know, Yahweh was a real person who walked the earth. He came on the earth for a certain purpose. You know what I mean? And he was he was created for a certain purpose to offset the sins of Adam, as well as it already being known that Christ would come on the earth to offset the sins of Israel based off of what happened during the time of Adam and Eve. Right. 
So I just wanted to get that a little bit real, right there real quick so people could understand, you know, Christ, Christ's ordinance and what Christ was set up as and what Christ was. Christ was the only man to be in a celestial form as well as the physical form. And, you know, I, I know I've gone over these scriptures before, but it's very important to reiterate it and, and you know, continue to try to, you know, beat that over people's head who want to learn and understand, not beat over, over people's head who don't want to learn. If you don't, then it is what it is. So let's um let's go to it. Let's go to, uh, I think it's John chapter one. Yeah, John chapter one. Or is it no, first John. It's actually first John chapter one. Right? Verse one. So it says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manif for the life was manifest, and we have seen it. And bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested unto us. Right. That's talking about Yahweh. That's talking about Christ. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Yahweh HaMashiach. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that the most high is light and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. Right? Now, which one was it? Um, I could be on the wrong one. I was trying to go to John. Not first John. I believe it was John. Just going into, um, to give you the understanding of Christ and his ordinance. Um, where are we? You know, I'm not used to doing this on an app like that. Well, I mean, I do a lot on the app, but. I'm more used to just reading it throughout the um the physical book. So yeah, this is uh I'm I'm sorry. I, I went to first John, I meant to just go to the John. Um in the beginning was the word, and the word was with the most high, and the word was the most high. So what does it say that the word was the most high? It's giving you the understanding that, you know, when you give when you have when you have that um understanding that Christ and the most high are one. So when it says the word the word was the most high, it's giving you that understanding that the most high and Christ are one. Right. The same was in the beginning with the most high. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life. And the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness, darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from the most high whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men brought him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to, to them gave he power to become the sons of the Most High, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of any man, but of God. So verse 14, where it says, and the word was made flesh, just going back to the under, just going back up where it says in the beginning was the word. So you have to ask the question, what is the word? The word is talking about Christ. That's the word, because a word when it says the word was made, made flesh. Obviously, a little word can't be made into flesh. That's how you know it's, a, it's metaphoric. It's, it's allegorical. It's basically saying that the word was Christ. That's why it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Christ dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. You know, when Christ was on the earth, they, the people, the disciples, the people that was on the earth, they revered Christ. They beheld Christ's glory. They exalted Christ. Right. And we had we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, the only begotten of the father. What does that mean? He was set up to be the only person to sit on the throne with the most high on the right hand side. To be in a celestial form and to come in the physical form to take the punishment that he took because it was all a part of what was set up. The most I had to go through that. The mo I mean, the most I had to put his son through that. The most I, Yahweh Shah had to go through that. You know, what I mean, sometimes, you know, we say the most high for Yahweh Shah because they're one. You know, you get caught up in that, but you have to understand that, you know, the most high is all, you know, what I mean, the most high is the beginning to the end. And he created you know, the manifestation of that with Yahweh Shah. 
And, you know, we know that this, the term Jesus, it means savior because that was his ordinance. Yahweh was supposed to come on earth, which what which is what he did to save Israel, to give Israel a chance at repentance from their sins. Only Israel. And let's get that. Let's get that real quick. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter um, 15, verse 24, where it says. Uh, it says, um. <clears throat> But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is Yahweh shall speak. Let's just go off for context. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and saw him saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Right. Because this person that was speaking to Christ was of another nation. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Meaning, listen, you a dog, you somebody that's foreign to this. This ain't for you. I'm not going to take, you know, the bread of, you know, my children as far as the Israelites and give this to you. And, 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 and you know, just going into this, what was the reply? Basically, her saying, listen, I'll take which, what I can get. I'll take, I'll take what I can get. You know what I mean? So. She had to prove that maybe she was, you know, she wasn't of that other nation, though. She was righteous. You get it? So, it, it, you know, I love this chapter here. But um, I want to get um, Acts 5 and 31 real quick. Let's get Acts 5 and 31. Because that's just, this right here is just a precept, right? Acts 5 and 31. Where it says, Him... Have the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This doesn't say everybody. This doesn't say every nation. There's one specific nation in there. It's only Israel. There's no cutting that. There's, there's, there's nothing. You can't do anything about that. Stop letting the church fool you guys. Christ did not die for everybody since. I know it may be hard to, 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 to grasp this and, and, and take it in. It's the truth. God only sent Christ to save Israel from their sins. Why is that? Because from the beginning, Christ, I mean, the Most High has always only been dealing with Israel. And this is the point that I try to make from the beginning of the video. Just giving you, just emphasizing the point that the Most High only deals with Israel. He does not deal with no other nation. He created all the nations, but he only deals with Israel. And I'm going to get that. Let's go into that right here. So let's get second Ezra's or is it? Um, Yeah, I believe it's second Ezra's. So we're going to get second Ezra's um, the sixth chapter. And I believe it's start at verse 53. Start at verse 51, 51. Right. So it says here. Unto Enoch thou gavest one part, which was dried up the third day, that he should dwell in the same part wherein are a thousand hills. But unto Leviathan thou gavest the seventh part, namely the moist, and hast kept him to be devourer of whom thou wilt and when. Upon the sixth day thou gavest commandment unto the earth that before these it should bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. And after these Adam also whom thou madest a Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So it just give you understanding that, yes, everybody come from Adam, right? You know, everybody come from the loins of Adam in regards to all the nations. Of him come we all. But it also gives you a distinction. It also gives you like a, a um, it also singles a nation out. So let's read here. It says, upon the sixth day thou gavest commandment unto the earth that before thee, it shall bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord, meaning, you know, um, dictator. You feel what I'm saying? Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Who is the people whom thou hast chosen? That's talking about Israel, right? All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Now, this is Ezra. Ezra is obviously an Israelite. So he's saying, you made the world for our sake, right? As for the other people which also come of Adam, as for the other people, once again, the Most High, this Bible, the scriptures is all about separatism. It's not about coming together. It's not about that. You have to understand that the things of this world are opposite of the Bible. So they push 
you know, coming together, integration, because it's opposite of the Bible. Everything about this world is opposite of the Bible for the most part, as far as, you know, agendas. So we have to understand the Most High is a separatist. He separated the nations. He didn't tell them to come together into this melting pot. He separated us. So let's continue on. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. You know, the world was made for Israel. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. Like, this is in the Bible here. And I know I've gone over this. This is in the Bible here. This says, thou hast said that the other nations to Israel are nothing. This is the word of God here, bro. This is no bullshit. This is no cutting no corners. This is the truth, man. The most high separated the nation is the, the nations, and he's only dealing with us. This is plain. This is plain and simple, man. This is plain and simple. It says here, it says right here in the very book, in verse 56, as for the other people. As for the other people, he's not he's not talking to everybody. If he was talking to everybody, he wouldn't distinguish another group of people. He would say he just would say as for wicked people or something. Like he's saying other people. He's not saying wicked people. He's saying other people because it's giving you a distinction that it gives you a distinction. This distinction between, you know, it's distinguishing Israel and other nations. The Most High only deals with a single group of people, people. We have to understand that. I know some of our people are waking up, so I'm not going to be too, um, you know, passionate in regards to me trying to, you know, of course I'm going to be passionate, but I'm, well, what I'm saying is I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like emphasize too much because people understand this already, you know, as far as some of our people, but it's still great to make these type of videos so, you know, you, you can just try to do your best at serving the Heavenly Father. That's what it's all about. It's all about serving God, serving the Heavenly Father, serving the Most High, Yahweh. Let's continue on, though. Um, yeah, man, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. Spittle, man. Spit. Saliva. That's what this is talking about. This is in the book. This is in the Bible. This is in the Bible here. This is in the Bible. It says God has likened the other nations unto spit. Are you serious? <laughs> this is the heavenly father, man. That's how you know a lot of people, they don't know God, man. They don't know God, bro. They don't know God, dog. They don't. Right? Thou has said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Basically saying, he likened you to a little speckled drop of water that came from a little bucket or something. You know what I mean? Like, you mopping the floor, and you got your water in the bucket, you may drop a little bit of water out of that bucket. Are you going to care about that little water that dropped out of the bucket, man? That's what the Most High is saying. You like a fucking a piece of speckled Trap that came out of a bucket. I don't care about you. I'm not going to try to pick that speckle up. Like, what? Like, you know what I mean? That's what this is talking about. The Most High is basically saying, these other nations ain't shit compared to you, Israel. Real talk. That's what this is, man. That's what this is right here. These nations ain't shit compared to you, Israel. You are the salt of the earth. You are my prized possession. That's what the Most High is saying. Right? And now, oh Lord, behold, these heathen... What is heathen? Heathen means other nations outside of Israel. That's what heathen means. Heathen means other nations outside of Israel, right? Which have ever been reputed as nothing. So they have a reputation for being nothing, even though in this plane of existence, we looked at it like we ain't nothing. That's how you know that the Bible is legit and that we've gone away from it based off of, you know, the consequences that will befall us if we were to disobey the Heavenly Father's laws, statutes, and commandments. And that's the main thing. It's not about religion. It's not about none of that bullshit. It's about laws, commandments, and statutes. That's it. The Bible is not a religious book. Don't get that confused, man. Let's continue on, though. But we, thy people, and I know that may, conf that may confuse people when I say the Bible is not a religious book. <laughs> but, you know, people have a lot of waking up to do, man. Let's continue on, though. I'm not trying to come off as condescending or, or, or like I'm, you know, like I know everything, but come on, man. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I've, I've done a lot of studying 
I've been in this thing, man. You can't, you can't, you can't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. If you, if you want to step in this bag or this realm of debate or trying to go at me when it comes to the scriptures, don't do it to yourself, please. But let's continue on, man. But we thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. Meaning, you know, in this in this plane of existence, we're at the bottom, like I said. The other nations, the other um, demographics, they're over us. And that's just the truth. That's prophecy. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? This is this is an allusion to right now. This verse right here, Second Ezra, um, chapter six and verse fifty nine, is an allusion to this this modern day time that we're living in right now. Because it says, "If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world?" Obviously, we're at the bottom. This world is not for us. The people that control this world and the things of it, as far as the money and the flow, commerce so on and so forth are the Caucasian Jews. Let's go into that. In this very book here, in this very chapter here, actually, let's go, let's go up. So it says here, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Let's read up verse eight. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. Right. What does that mean? That's a signifier, meaning that Jacob's kingdom, Jacob's rulership, which is so-called black rulership and righteousness, because we had rulership before, just not in righteousness. You know, that is going to come after this wicked rulership right now, which is Esau's kingdom. Esau is the end of the world, the so-called white man. When it says Esau is the end of the world, it's not saying that white people are the end of the world. It's saying that the, at, when the end cometh in this world that we know today. It's going to be governed and ruled by white people. And who rules the world right now? White people. Not generally. I'm just talking about a certain sector of white people, Caucasian Jews, which we know is basically a representation of all white people. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, you can say that it's, there, it's, it's, it's specific because they're, they're Jews, quote unquote Jews. But we know that they all come from the caves. We all know that they all come from the Khazar Empire and so on and so forth. So let's get that in Revelation. Matter of fact, before I go to Revelation, um, let's go to the book of Obadiah, actually. Right. Obadiah. So it says here, just going into Esau, the vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord, the most high concerning, e concerning Edom, Edom being Esau. Edom means red. When you look at white people, what do you see? You see red. How do you see red? They have translucent skin. The blood shows forth through their skin. Therefore, they're not white. They're red. They're pink. White is the color of um, a paper, a piece of loose leaf paper. That's white. You know what I mean? Like white is the color of, you know, a, a, of a white T-shirt. You get like, you know, just simple. You know, I don't mean to get all. I'm just saying, man, we have to understand the truth, man. Let's continue on, though. Um. In verse two, it says, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. I have made thee small among the heathen. What nation of people make up the least on the planet Earth? When it says I made thee small among the heathen, it's talking about all the other nations outside of Israel, because we already know Israel makes up the whole the, the, the most of the population on Earth. But we look at it as the minority. Ain't that some stupid shit right there? It says it says here, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. They make up the least percentage on the earth in regards to the population. White people do. They really do. Just look it up. And, when, and also, when it's talking about small among the, among the heathen, they have the, they have the least, um, like, as far as their genetics, as far as their makeup, they're, they're, they're weaker than us, just scientifically. It's just, it's just a fact. It's just a fact, right? So let's continue on. I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Yes, white people are greatly despised. Greatly despised. It's just the truth, man. And I'm not, I'm not saying all white people, you know, you have certain white people that are good people. But at the end of the day, they all fall as a nation. Just being honest. And you I don't even know that that's a loaded statement right there. Me saying that all that there's white people that are good people. I don't give a fuck. Listen, at the end of the day, man, when you come from that ilk. You come from Esau. I don't care how nice you may seem. You know what I mean? I don't care how, how golden your smile is. Listen, man. You come from Esau. 
That's just, come on, man. Let's continue on, though. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. The pride of thine heart. The pride of white people. Aren't white people so prideful? Not, ne- not necessarily general. I'm just talking about as far as the, the, the power structure. The higher ups. They're prideful. Why? Because they lie, they cheat, they steal. They rule on deception. Right? The pride of thine heart have deceived thee because they think that they're God. They think that they can, you know, they control all these laws and all that as far as the laws of the land. They think that they can control prophecy as well. They think they can, they can prevent prophecy. But they understand that they can't do that. They understand that the, they understand the power of this book. They really do. Believe it or not, they understand the power of this book. They understand this book as far as the truth about it. The most High had to give it to them. Because at the end of the day, they rule. So they have to know the truth. Right? Let's continue on though. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Now, what animal represents America? What bird represents America? What bird is on the back of the quarter? Or the front of the quarter, however you want to slice it. Right? Come on, people. Come on, people. We have to wake up. We have to do better. We can't just take one thing from the Bible that's truth and eliminate all the other truths. If this is the truth, then then everything else that's prophesied in the Bible has to be true. This is plain. This this is so plain, man. It's crazy. This is plain who this is talking about here. Right? Thou, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nests among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If these came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou, thou cut off? Will they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, will they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people don't 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 really understand, you know, the machinations and the nefarious actions that come from the power structure. So it's hard for people to be, you know, it, you know, people they have a sense of incredulity when it comes to this type of stuff because they live in a matrix. So it's hard for them to, to come to grips with the truth. So it's, that's why it says, you know, how are his things, his hidden things sought out? Just to paraphrase or whatever. Where where were we? Where it says. If these came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Man, this is crazy. And prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. That's talking about Esau. There's no understanding in the so-called white man. The most I gave him the understanding of the scriptures because that's a part of the plan. He, he has to understand the Bible. But as far as when it comes to like rationale, when it comes to righteousness, there's no understanding in him. He's a devil. And I don't give a fuck who don't like that. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. It's the truth, man. It's the truth. The so-called white man is the devil. What does devil mean? Deceiver. Who's the biggest deceiver on the planet Earth? So-called white man, because he controls all this. Therefore, he controls what's, what, what's put in the textbooks. He controls what we see on the news. He controls all this stuff. They deceive. The biggest devil. Wake up, man. We got to wake up. We got to wake up. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, against thee. They have eat thy bread, excuse me. They that eat thy bread have laid a a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day say say of the Lord, even destroy the wise men of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau, right? I forgot to read verse three. I don't know why sometimes I forget to read this. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Well, I, I didn't read all of it. Though thou dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. I'm going to just end it off with this one. Though thou dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. White people come from where? The Caucasus Mountains, right? Peace.
God bless you all.